People and dreams, that's what we're covering in, um, what is this, our fifth class, uh, dream season 10, fifth class, people and dreams. So welcome tonight to people on Facebook and welcome to everybody that's here. People in dreams, it's crazy because often we tend to think that the people in our dreams are literal, that that's who they are, but they, most people in dreams are representative, they're symbolic, it's not the actual person. Um, so to understand the meaning of people in dreams, you ask, what's the person's name? Is it a biblical character? Um, where do you know them? I, online I posted that we, sometimes we see people, uh, actors in our dreams, um, pastors, leaders. The president has shown up in a lot of dreams, doctors, governors, people in power, our friends, our relatives, dead or alive. So what can these people mean in our dreams? And um, one of the first places to start is... The, uh, the meaning of their name. And online, I do have a book. I don't know. Um, the book that I use for understanding um, names is called The Name Book. It's by Dorothy Astoria. That's A S T O R I A. And I'll post that online with the, with the resources. But um, so that's what you can do is look up their name. And when you're interpreting a dream, you wait for that aha moment. So you can look up the meaning of the name and it can mean, um, like for instance, Doug means adventurer. And so for me, I, ha I grew up with Dougs. I worked for a Doug. I know, I just know a zillion Dougs. So when they show up in my dream, often God is saying, hey, I've got an adventure for you. I'm gonna take you on it. But sometimes I've looked up other names and it's like, nah, that's not it. So it'll meet with your spirit. You'll go, ah, oh, you'll have that aha moment and you'll know that that's what the person is representing in your dream. So you look to see if their name is significant. You look to see if there's a play on words that sometimes the meaning, like Christopher Walken, um, Christ walk, it can be your Christian walk. So if Christopher Walken, the the actor shows up in your dream, that's what it can represent. How is the person connected to the dreamer? Is it your boss? Is it a leader, someone you admire? Is it a friend? You look to see if, um, if that connection is there and what the person represents to you. Are they compassionate? Are they full of mercy? Um, is it your husband? Is it an ex in your life? That if someone shows up in your, in your um, dream when I was newly married and I had dreams of an ex-boyfriend then that was it was usually happened after I had a fight with my husband and so I'd have this dream and I'd wake up and I would be so glad that I was married to my husband <laughs> and so it made me thankful for who God really brought in my life and not my ex but other places where what the ex can mean is an old habit like if you were a smoker and you dreamt of an ex if you were a smoker that gave up smoking and you dreamt of your ex, then it can mean that you're going to be tempted by old habits. So that's kind of a heads up dream to say, to, to pay attention, to ask God to strengthen you. And so, um, for instance, if you had a dream about an ex and you were a smoker, gave up smoking, or had a bad habit that you gave up, then when you wake up from the dream, then you take it to prayer. You ask God, Lord, help me when this temptation comes up. Help me be strong and say no to it. So that's the purpose of those dreams. Okay, is this person a political or spiritual leader, like a pastor, a prophet, a president? Um, many people are dreaming about President Trump. Well, his very name, I think Donald, means world leader, and Trump means that, you know, you can trump anything. So there could be a play on words with his name. And as I was looking at tonight, and I was listing the different names from, from people in dreams that I've received recently, Many of the names of actors of our president are all plays on words. But what happens when we, when a person shows up is we tend to think of them as President Trump and all the stuff that comes with that. So to step back and say, God, what are you saying through this person or through their name? Um, that's something we need to, we need to do because it can be, we can put our own personal bias into the understanding what the name means when we actually need to say, God, what are you saying through this person? So, um, let's see, kind of whipping through that. Um, do you have a person in a dream that you're <laughs> wondering about? 
Does anyone, is anyone come, come to mind that you want to ask about? I had a dream uh, a few months ago about Matthew McConaughey and his wife were at a venue. Matthew McConaughey and his wife were at a before you asked. I think that's what it means. I didn't know God was in Google, but that's pretty good. <laughs> that is wild. So Sharon's phone just actually was answering her question. Of who, Matthew McConaughey? It came up on my phone. Yeah, I think it, you must have had a button push where it heard you. Yeah, and so it looked him up for you. <laughs> that is a God incidence. So who is Matthew McConaughey to you? What does he represent? He's an actor, and I see him as a person who's into fitness. And I, I'm not positive, but I think he's a Christian. Okay. I'm not sure. He, he appears to be a, a good person. Okay. So that's in, in and your dream. To, and the dream had to do with giving. Okay, had to do with giving. Okay, so the first thing... What I said was to um, look up the meaning of its name. I see Karen's already on it. I'll look it up too in the book, see what it says about Matthew. I almost answered with the end. Matthew is gift of God. You said it has to do with giving? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking here. I didn't look at McConaughey, yeah, I just yeah, looked so up I Matthew. Look up. Okay. <laughs> yes, so Matthew means gift of God, and the dream is about giving. So it can be God emphasizing the giving in the dream. Does that seem to fit? No, because I was the one that was supposed to be giving, and I was going, I felt awkward. So I felt that giving in this instance was very taxing because I was really going to be overextending myself uh, and getting into trouble financially if I give down the path of give, 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 give. So I was in the dream, I was wrestling with to give or not to give for their venue that they were, that was a charity that they had. Yes. <coughs> so would that mean? His name meaning gift of God. It's 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 like an affirmation. No, God knew you were <laughs> God knew and so he's he knew your process at the time. And so God works with that and and it's a learning thing. But now you're seeing the dream was affirming what you felt in your heart where you weren't on you know, where you were unsure about it. But you sharing that is actually a God incidence because a God incidence is when God um, has an incident in your life that keeps keeps repeating over and over, so it's highlighted and it stands out. So, surely, what were we talking about at the beginning? The giving, the cost. Yes. Yeah. That 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 in giving, God told me to give something, but but then He said, "But I want you to do it when I tell you to." So I had to walk really carefully before Him and listen because I kept wanting. going to give it, it would, it sounded, it was like a great idea, and I, it was perfect, but then when he asked me to give it, it was like all of a sudden, the circumstances, it changed, and now I need this thing, <laughs> I need it now, and he goes, don't worry, I got this, so, you know, just go ahead and do it, and trust me, and I've got this, and so then he provided for me a car. Wow. <clears throat>
secret place here where we don't talk about other people all the time. But um, that came through just like grease, light, and yeah. the process that other people around him have been telling him is don't don't worry, be patient, you'll have to apply many, many times. Mm -hmm. But it went through Yeah, so right God is much more than he was expecting and it came at exactly the right time. Thank you, God. Yes. And so maybe you had a few dreams about prayer. Wow. Yes. So we just agree that, that it's come up. Just This is what we look for in dream class that um, always really charges our batteries, is the God incidences. And when we come together and we see God repeating a theme, and right tonight he's repeating the theme of giving. So if, uh, if you're watching online and you're being stirred about something where God's been speaking to you about giving or you've heard stories, text those in. And um, Mara's, Mara's keeping track tonight, so she'll share those with us. Um, but again, what just came up in like minutes was Sharon brought up a dream. As we're talking about people in dreams, Sharon brought up Matthew McConaughey and wondered what he meant in her dream. We looked up Matthew. It means gift of God. Then... That stirred me because right before dream class tonight, Shirley came and shared about something God has been stirring in her heart to give and gave a story of giving, and then which stirred up uh, Shirley again. You mentioned something else about giving. I don't remember. And then um, Helen talked about her son and the giving. And then Sharon, you said something else. So there's like all these affirmations about God speaking about giving. So we just agree with you, God, that you would stir our hearts, that we would listen, and um, in the timing that you tell us to give, Lord, that we would listen to what you'd have us give and when to give it, that we'd, we would just be totally in alignment with your plans and purposes and your generosity on the earth, Lord. Whether we're giving money or time or whatever it is you stir us to give, we want to be in agreement with you, Lord. So we thank you for that. And we thank you for encouraging us, like just what you did with Sharon, that when we have questions about if we give too much, that how, what the impact will be with us. And, and Lord, I just thank you that you settle it, and I thank you that you used a dream to settle it and confirm what you were saying and during in Sharon's life. We bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I ask another quick question? Yeah. Because I noticed I wrote down the amount, which isn't on amount, but it's $29. Ah, yes. So in Sharon's dream, she was supposed to give $29. And I ended up, it looks like I ended up giving it to who gave it. This pen is being tossed. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I just have to get them out of my... Let me see if you can find a blue one in there. So $29 is... Um, 29 means departure or leaving. So 25 can mean you're training for ministry. 29 can be departing, um, leaving, and then 30 can be starting a ministry. So thank you, Mara. So in the dream she had that she gave, is there a different blue? <laughs> a different dark blue in there. Um... Laura says, I went to a compassion and have been inspired to sponsor a child. Uh, what was that again? I went to a compassion and have been inspired to sponsor a child. Laura oh, said that. Wow. Laura said that? Mm -hmm. Wow, so here we have another, um, another affirmation. And so what's cool about sponsoring a child what would that mean metaphorically? Uh, supporting a gift. Yeah, would be supporting a gift. So that's pretty phenomenal too, where that, that our physical acts can also have a prophetic uh, bent to it. So supporting the gifts in people, encouraging people in their gifts, that's what that would mean. Is there any other? In? Psalms 29 says, has giving twice, it's the Lord makes the deer give birth, and also 
May the Lord give strength to his people. What song is that? Psalms 29. It's a really cool song. Can you dare give words, Mary? That's just so awesome. I know. <laughs> so... Dear give birth can actually tie in with the child su and mm -hmm. supporting a gift because it can be a play on words of D E A R. Mm -hmm. right. And so birth would be um, babies or or births can represent gifts as well. Mm -hmm. And giving strength is ability, giving the ability to give. Mm -hmm. That is phenomenal. So, Shirley, do you want to pray that for Sharon and her yes. dream about yes. um, gifts of God? Yes. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you speak to us in dreams and visions. And, Father, we thank you for Sharon. We thank you, Father God, that yes, you God. equip her to do what you call her to do. You, and Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you spoke specifically and that you brought the right people in to be able to, to speak into what you've called her to do. So we just thank you. We thank you that you give her strength, mm -hmm. ability to do what you have called her to do, which is to give. And anything else, Father, anything else that you've called her to do, you equip her so that we don't walk in our own strength, but the strength that God gives us. And so we thank you for your grace and your mercy on Sharon's life in dreaming and in interpreting dreams and then in following through on what her dreams are about. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. I know. <laughs> this is that same dream that I asked you about with the lions and the lions were coming at Yes. That's phenomenal. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll have to. <laughs> I know. It's a very good dream. Yes, thank you, God. Okay, Mar, you got this, right? Yes. So, okay. So, is there any other questions or comments? All right. Let's see. Okay. So, I had a dream a long time ago about Sean White. I think I've told you guys about Sean White, my Sean White dream. My Sean White dreams. But I think I might jump ship and come back to Sean White. I think I'm going to talk about, um, yeah, as we go into it, this was a dreamer. This is a different dream. It's called sign language. Oh, move the furniture on myself again. Oh, bless me. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So this dream is a dream that a person had, and it's titled sign language. And in the dream... The dreamer noticed that there was someone to their right. And when they looked to see who it was, it was Jesus. He was doing sign language. She didn't understand, but she sensed what God was showing would require her attention. So in this dream, someone doing sign language. <laughs> and you don't understand. What do you think Jesus wants to teach the dreamer? see all these grinning faces because people have heard the story before. Oh. <laughs> so Jesus wanted to teach the dreamer sign language. What did Jesus teach all the time in the New Testament? What were his stories called? Parables. Parables. And they are Jesus' sign language because parables are metaphoric language. And so... Um, and then what we even talked about tonight with the God incidents is that when we see those signs, that's God's sign language to pay attention to what he's stirring up and what he's causing to stand out to us. And I mean, how many have just been, like Helen mentioned earlier, she's reading the Bible, but certain verses just leap out. And sometimes you're just driving somewhere and all of a sudden for no reason whatsoever, a billboard stands out to you about a baseball team. <laughs> and then... <laughs> happened to Shirley and I when we were going down to a conference in Palm Springs in the baseball stadium. It turned out one of the speakers was Rookie of the Year for the Angels many years ago and that 
on the way down, the reason the stadium stood out, or the baseball stood out, is because on the way down, the stadium stood out because there was people getting married at the stadium as we passed by. So that was an unusual coincidence. <laughs> and so God was basically speaking about um, marriage and stadiums and baseball all in one. And it's, it's a crazy thing. But, but as you pay attention to the signs that seem crazy and that are disjointed, they all come together in the end, and that's what God was doing. It was Dodgers baseball, which is blue, which stands for prophetic, and the speaker that we watched was Rookie of the Year for Angels, and getting married in the stadium was God was marrying the prophetic and the apostolic together, and we were watching it unfold, and that's actually what happened when we went down there. But even, even the word baseball, metaphorically, could mean foundational dance. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Helen, you are rolling. All right. <laughs> oh, we didn't even get that one, Helen. That's good. <laughs> Baseball. Baseball. Yeah. 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 See how you're just going on your merry way, trying to drive to a conference, and God's speaking to you. He just does things like that. Just intervenes. Hey, I have something to say. So, I always wear my glasses on my head instead of my eyes. Um, Mark 4.34 says, Jesus did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. So Proverbs 25.2 says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search it out. So as, you, as, as he awakens your eyes and your heart and your ears to pay attention to what he's saying and doing, and as Helen mentioned, Habakkuk, 1, or Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, talks about Habakkuk says, I will watch to see what he will say to me. So we're watching to see how God is speaking. It doesn't say I'll listen to hear, but it's watch watch to see what he's saying and that's what signs are all about we are way off track with people in dreams but we did tie it together with Matthew McConaughey so, <laughs> uh, oh and Matthew 7 7 says ask seek and knock so it's ask keep on seeking you know keep on knocking and God's gonna um, give you the answer to what he's speaking through his signs is there anything else on signs that anyone wants to throw in there? God loves riddles, and I just, I love them myself. Well, I love them especially when the answer comes. I like the, like the disciples, what are you saying? And Jesus just kept saying it through the signs and the parables. But it really expands your thinking. I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words. So you can actually say a lot just through showing a picture. Okay, so there's that one. Then we have, um, to illustrate another aspect of people in dreams, is what if it's a faceless person in your dream? And we've got this dream this week called The Big Game. So this is the title. The dreamer titled it. And often you can see uh, hints to the interpretation by how they, how they um, title it. So this is the big game. It was a two-on-two -two basketball game. I had a partner, but I didn't know who he was because his face was a blur. We were going to play the all-star team. They never lose. The winner of the game would have all debt wiped away, not just monetary, but everything in life. The slate was wiped clean. It was an incredible game. We were extraordinary players. We blocked shots, made half-court shots, <laughs> jump shots, 10 feet in the air, layups, literally touching the rim. It was, if, it was if we were flying off the ground and into the air most of the game. We couldn't be stopped. The opponents were angry at our performance. In the end, we won the game. Is this a good dream? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so... So the dreamer is in a two-on-two, two-on-two basketball game. Oh, Helen, there's basketball. What did this one do? <laughs> oh, Change 
changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> a woven dance. <laughs> a woven dance. That is good, Shirley. We have to write that in. We're interpreting the okay, yeah. And then you look at football. It's <laughs> getting wild. And then you look at soccer. <laughs> That's everything. Okay, it was an incredible game. Uh, extraordinary. We were extraordinary. We extraordinary players. Okay. Blocked shots. Uh, flying off the ground. Dot, dot, dot. Flying off the ground. Pretty amazing, huh? Okay, and couldn't be stopped. Couldn't be stopped. And won the game. Oh, Applause were angry. So who's this dream about? The dream of They all said it. It was just really soft. Oh. <laughs> Why is that about the dreamer? Two on two basketball. We already added woven dance with basketball. The reason I wrote it down too is because uh, it reminded me of years ago. I heard that um, Isaiah 40, verse 31. What was that? Those who wait, that word for wait is active. It's not a sitting still. That word for wait is active, and it literally means to weave yourself into the Lord. Oh, wow. So. That is so cool. Isn't that cool? That is so yeah. cool. So, the, so even, it's so cool how God is because... We think wait is in that, you know, quiet place yeah. somewhere Static. alone. Yeah. But with the Lord, it's a woven dance. Waiting on him is very active. Mm -hmm. um, what else stands out? Um, it's almost like a David and Goliath thing mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. where it's... Um, you're not they expected to win. Where they weren't supposed to, and they overcame, and they did. Yes, yeah. yes. So then we go over to flying off the ground, blocking shots. What can that represent? Karen? Blocking attacks of the enemy. Blocking attacks of the enemy. How would you exactly block? Right. How would you block attacks of the enemy? With the word. Just by praying, by mm -hmm. the word of God, by the word, prayer. I love that. What about flying off the ground? Well, flipping against the enemy. Ah! It's like a rebound, you know? I like that. Yeah. 
flipping things would be taking a negative and an, and flipping it to a positive. Well, that's kind of what a rebound shot is, isn't it? I mean, you're taking a component shot and diverting it and then yeah. making yourself what so, they were thinking. Yeah, so rebounds, that's good. Uh, Laura said, what is that scripture, whenever two or more are in in the game, I am also, I'm with them also? Yeah, so the or two or two, two, is that Matthew 18? Someone look that up. Yeah. Matthew 18, that's awesome, she caught the agreement there. Two or more are gathered in my name. Agreement. That is phenomenal. Is it 18? 8? 18, 18? Do I hear 18, 18 and 19? 19 through 20? I might be way off. Matthew 18, 20. Wherever, where, for where two or three gather together as my followers, I'm, I'm there among them. So Matthew 18, 20. He's there, but there is the one that says you have what you ask. Mm -hmm. So there's that agreement. So there's two agreeing on one. Two agreeing on, on her? in John? John 8, 17. Okay. This is an awesome dream. <laughs> so what, So through dreams, we can get a picture of, of the dreamer and what kind of gifts they carry and what it looks like. So as we're looking, what are you seeing about the dreamer so far? What kind of a person are they? What are their gifts? What was that, Karen? Intercession. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, intercession. Their gift is prayer. Yeah. You can see because they come into agreement with God, right. and it's also closeness with God that they we they spend right. time with God. That's right. that's what that tells us. Yeah, they didn't have um, a prayer of winning. <laughs> they didn't have a prayer of winning until <laughs> <laughs> they would spend time with God, and then they kicked that's butt. Right. Okay, and so the dream also gives them clues in how to intercede as far as staying in the word and um, praying in agreement. So we've seen the, um, the verses that they can stand on. We see John eight seventeen, Matthew, we see Isaiah 40, 31. Um, so these are, as the, as the dreamer watches and sees this, they can write those verses down and after a dream like this, when you wake up and you break it down, you get all the keys to prayer, you can say, Lord, I agree with you. And um, as a class, we agree with what God's doing in the dreamer's life. But then the dreamer can carry on praying and agreeing with this dream. So that's what we do with our dreams as we break them down and find um, where they, um, verses and stuff. Is there anything else? Is there any mercy in there? It doesn't look like it. It looks like they just, I don't think, when you're in intercession and warfare, you don't have mercy. Okay. Yeah, you, you, um, you completely, um, you completely take care of the enemy. One thing that I really like about this dream is down where it says, here's, here's the, here's the, here's the gold, kind of like the David and Goliath say, here's what I get when I do this. All my debts are paid, and it, and she said, well, physical and spiritual. Yes. Okay, so so God gave her a thing for life and godliness. She wins everything for life, for her physical life, and for her godly life. So this is a full reward of Jesus. That's one of the things that really just, I mean, that was just like a full reward. And then also the fact that they were able to leap, there's not a lot of weight holding them down which also talks into that 
because if you lay off all your weight, mm -hmm. you're able to do mm -hmm. what God's called you to do without being mm -hmm. held back. I just think that is so incredible about the dreamer. Oh, nine minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. The Bible even talks about what you were saying with the out the weight. You know, there's that whole verse about mm -hmm. let us throw off everything that hinders. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Can Which you find that one? Yeah. Yeah. The race that is set before us. Yes, throw off every. Is it Hebrews 12? Uh, let me look. <laughs> um, yes, and so, and then, uh, yeah, so the death's wiped away. That's obvious as Christians we have our debts exactly. wiped away, but I love how you pulled out yeah. the um, everything for life and godliness with two S's, just in case exactly. you're wondering if I yeah. spelled wrong. Exactly. So, and I think that's 1 Peter 1 something. I thought it was around 1 3, but it might be might be 2 Peter. I think it's in there somewhere. It is. It's in the Bible somewhere. See how smart I am? <laughs> somewhere it is written. And so, what I love about this dream, too is that it's immeasurably more. You know, you couldn't be stopped. You and God cannot be stopped. That all things are possible. Philippians 14? 314? 413. I can do all things. Oh, thank you. Then I think of Psalm 118, 6 through 7. The Lord is with me, I will not be That's good. Psalm 118. Uh -huh. uh, six and seven. This this uh, dream is rich <laughs> in in, uh, in, victories. in victories. Yes. Okay. So so we're we're coming down to the end of the hour. So we'll wrap this up. But as you can see. What we do in the class, too, is we really break down dreams. We find um, immeasurably more in them. God just, you can see that there's just an open heavens here tonight where God is just continuing. And if we stayed on this dream, it would just branch out from here because there's so much here. But this also goes back to um, Proverbs 25, 2, that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's um, the glory of kings to search it out. So when we're here, what we do, too, is we start the dream. Get, we really give a jumping off, a, um, a launching place for the dreamer to break this down and to continue to ask God to let it unfold for them. But um, what I like to do in dream interpretation is um, dream interpretation belongs to God, Genesis 40, verse 8. I like to break it down um, to get the understanding of the dream and then to finalize it, to pull it together in biblical dream interpretation is to play for the dreamer. So um, would one of you like to pray for the dreamer? And as we do that, what I do when I'm praying for the dreamers, I just follow it around and I just hit on a few different um, what the dream is saying. And, come, and that way we're coming into agreement with what God is saying about the dreamer. We're not adding to it. We're not subtracting. We're just agreeing with what God is saying in the dream. Does anyone want to pray for the dreamer? I thought so too. Everybody. <laughs> Dear Lord, I thank you for this thing, Lord God. Yes. I thank you that they are woven into the dance of being in agreement with you. Yes. Lord God, that they know how to move when you call them to move. They know how to wait when you call them to wait. They know how to seek your word when it's time to battle, and they know how to intercede for those who need interception. Lord God, we pray to you that um, you are teaching them and you are in alignment with them for life and godliness. Lord God, yes. we thank you that they are flying with you. Lord God, that they're soaring with you, that their relationship with you is going higher. Lord God, and Lord, we pray to you that um, they are able to do exceedingly abundantly more because you are with them. Yes. Lord God, that um, all things are possible because you are with them, Lord God. Yes. And we thank you that with you, nothing is impossible, Lord God, that they cannot be stopped because they are with you, Lord God. And we just praise you for your ability to remove all our debts, Lord God. 
Praise you, Jesus, for their victories. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, what's kind of hysterical about this whole thing is the reason I did the dream is because their partner had a blurred out face. So, when we have a, um, <laughs> a, in a dream, if it's a faceless person, what can a faceless person represent? The Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit, she's two on two, but the, her partner is the Holy Spirit. Yes, he is, so that's the Holy Spirit. I just have to let everyone know that I wasn't a spelling bee. I was actually a very good spelling as a speller as a child. I'm not sure what happened since then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you, God, for that. We have a short dream, do we? No, we don't have a short dream. So, let's see. I did receive, I'll shorten the, you have to watch me spin. Um. I did receive a dream with Tom Selleck in it. And it seems like in the past we've had a dream with Tom Selleck. So what are some possibilities if you dream about Tom Selleck? What does Tom mean? Is, it in, is Tom in the Bible? So when we look at all these things, it doesn't necessarily mean it. We're just at some possibilities of Tom Selleck. Who could he represent? In the Bible, um, Thomas. What was he first of all? Yeah, he was a he was a disciple, and I think it doesn't it say Thomas the twin. Yeah, which his name means twin. Twin. And then some of the sayings we get are doubting Thomas, right? So as the dreamer looks at the possibilities, they see what fits. Okay, so there's Thomas. What about Selleck? Well, I see sale. You like see sale? Like you're selling an item. Oh, so Mara sees sell. So it could be sell. Oh, he's, he's making it worse. Okay, sell or sell. This is the first time, but today when I looked at it, I saw or heard. Select. Select. So it could be a play on words. Mm -hmm. So those are some possibilities of what Tom Selleck could be in yeah. the dream. Like double select. Double select. Yeah, because twins double. Yes. So the twin could actually be a, like a multiplying, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some possibilities about what Tom well, Selleck. And Selleck could also be the CEO. Yeah. Yes, Mara covered that. Yes. No, I was thinking of the it, cell it. Oh, like cell a, like it. A jail cell it. Oh, a jail. Okay. I was thinking of a human cell. That's what I was thinking of too. Yeah. <laughs> but we have human or jail, huh? Yeah. So see how it just keeps <laughs> going farther. Human cell or jail cell. Um, question: Since he is. Such an iconic actor, and in series, could it be? Could he represent a police commissioner? Could he represent? Right, because yeah. he's been what a private detective and a police commissioner. Right, yeah. For private eye could be E Y E. Private eye, uh, blue bloods, right? Yeah. yeah. It kind of. I mean, he's had. 
several iconic roles yeah. that had to do with justice. Yeah. Uh -huh. That had to do with justice. like yeah. um, law and order. Law and order, right? Even the western story. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like black folk are too. I wouldn't say too many of westerns, but <laughs> I'm just thinking of the ones that were like the white ones. Like Cher and the <laughs> Yes. Yes, yeah, so you and you can break these down even farther. Private mm -hmm. eye and blue bloods could have to do with the prophetic gifting. Mm -hmm. So as you come up in this class, these are all of the possibilities of what Tom Selleck could represent. But as the dreamer looks at the dream and as we interpret the dream, of course, context is everything. And then it'll the dreamer will go, ah, that's what it means. They'll once you say the right thing, they'll get it. Yeah. And if we had the context of the dream, then we would be able to get a better idea of, okay, it's not this, it's not that. Like in the dream I saw, I don't think it was doubting. Um, and there's some other things I didn't think it would be. But, um, but the dreamer, no, it'll hit them. So we will stop now. We'll have a 10-minute break, and then we will come back with more interpreting dreams. And we'll cover more people in dreams since I didn't do that very well the first hour. Thank you.